I've got another question for you, just just regarding the business and things. It's like, how did you originally structure your pricing as a new professional uh, professional on audio animals around 2012? Uh, structuring structuring it was um was difficult because yeah. um the the thing is is when you're when you first start out um. You can't like, for instance, say for instance, someone just kind of was like, right, I'm going to have a mastering studio. And I'm, I'm going to build this mastering studio. I've got a mastering studio, for instance, and um, right, I'm going to charge uh, the same price as these guys are charging. Right, okay. But then the question is, is why would they go to you when there's already someone that's been established for ten years? Um, you're you're if you've both got the price you both got the same price like let's say it's very hard for someone to to kind of compete with with like the studio that i've got for instance yeah. um and they almost would have to go in lower to win the work kind of thing and yeah. it, that be the factor um and then the what I did was, um, and we're still in the process of doing it. Um, is basically um, what I, what I, what I did was created a service that people people could afford, and then as we get busier and busier, the price just gradually increases. You know, um, like we, I think we had in twenty. It was early 2012, I think it was. We were charging um, ten pound a track at one point for a couple of months, and it was just to bring people in. Oh. I I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, just because you kind of at ten pound a track you kind of just say you you know that's a bit too cheap. But we had a very yeah. um, a, a kind of a, a, a community where we could we could kind of go right for ten pound we'll we'll do your track. Um, and then when we gradually stepped the, the pricing up, they were still clients of ours and they were more than happy to spend £30, £40 for the mastering. Um, and it's a gradual thing. And um, we're well overdue a, uh, a price increase on the mastering. But we we like the thing for us is we like working with people from all demographics and, and all, all yeah. over the world. Um, you know, there's people like the, the thing for us is when it comes to the. Uh, the um the structure of the, the how much things cost is we always create something that's affordable so we have an affordable version of it which is no different necessarily from um you know it's it's the the full quality there's no like um cutting corners or anything like that but by having just one that's affordable and then having lots of little add-ons that you can add on so the the the, the affordable one is just what is the 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 kind of brunt of it it's the mastering with a five day working turn a five working day turnaround and that's it if you want to add an instrumental you add another 10 quid um some people don't want all the little add-ons that you get with other services they just want the master turned around in a reasonable time if you want it in one working day you get it pay 20 pound more you get it in one working day so you can you can price it up so i think the max you can price it up to is like for one master is like 270 quid once you add the dolby atmos mastering on and lots of people do order everything and they do add all these different things on um but for me it's essential for me to have this affordable version that is just the 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 brunt of it that is what you actually need and then everything else is an add-on there's an interesting bit of advice there what you said and it links back to something you said earlier is that if you have some security you can charge lower as well because then you can use it which is better yeah. for the business you can get as many people in and over over deliver yeah. Because you know you've got that security and then you know they're going to come back and then you can stage it up. The thing so, is, um, as well, in regards to that, is um, is where you love what you're doing as well. You don't mind working for relatively cheap. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah, it's true. really <laughs> fun doing what you're doing. Um, yeah. and, you, uh, and the reason as well that we went in so low when we first ever started, um, and this was only for a couple of months, and it was just literally to bring in, um, bring in a, a client base. Because... When we started the business, what we didn't have 
was any sort of client base. We didn't have any client list. Yeah. So we didn't have anything where we could say, oh, we've done this, we've worked on this, this, this. Whereas now, 10 years down the line, we've got a, a client list that's that's ridiculous and it sells itself. But back then, you didn't ha we didn't have any of that. So we had to build that up. Um, and the only way to build that up was to kind of offer a, a, a very, very, very affordable service um, and just work four times as hard as we would have to. Yeah. 